Half a day students, I am Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. You all have been through a year of big changes. We've had to adapt and make big changes to keep our families and our island safe. But with change comes opportunity and a chance to try new things like PBS University. While Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenori and I will continue to do our part to keep our island safe, you students have a part to play as well. Your part is to keep learning and to keep up with your lessons. That's why I am happy to see you here ready to learn with PBS University. PBS University is a way to bring a continuous educational curriculum to you while you stay safe at home during this time. To help you keep up with your studies, we asked our friends at PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education to put together this episode. Thank you for doing your part and have a great lesson. PBS University is a program by PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education in conjunction with public school teachers. These lessons are created to provide both parents and students with a unique educational experience while helping students to continue learning at home. PBS University, next on PBS Guam. One, two, three, four. Come along, let's sing a song. We'll have a great adventure. We'll have a great adventure. Numbers, letters, science things, all that we can do. Help you deal with how you feel. Share with us too. It's super cool and just like school. Yeah. Our awesome learning adventures. So grab a friend, the fun will end. Our awesome learning adventures. Awesome learning adventures. Rananim kids, Rananim is Chukis for hello. So, Rananim, and welcome to PBS University. I am Miss Perez, your kindergarten teacher. I am happy to teach you the amazing world of letters and words and sight words. I am excited to review sight words with you and to introduce two more sight words. By the end of this lesson, you will have learned the sight words and, and, Good. What does and look like? Can you see? Yeah, we got that little circle thing from the word am. Oh, they sound very similar. What do you see when you see the word and? There it is. Take a look at it. Think of shapes. And let's do an Easter egg hunt word search for the word and. Can you find the word and? I'll give you a hint. Think about a shape, like a shopping cart or a scooter. Do you know which one it is? Yes! That's the word and. Great job! I know you found the word and. Let's read it in a sentence using our other sight words from last week. So, and we're going to enlist the help of, you guessed it, our movie title. I love that word, amazing. We're going to take the word amazing and we're going to borrow it for the first sentence that we're going to read. I am amazing and blank hmm. what is that blank for but let's fill in that blank with the word okay blank go away the blank is gone good 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 let's use the word good today as our sight word there it is so now we have a sentence i am amazing and good Okay, I want all the other words to go away. What does good look like? Okay, we have a letter that has a circle, but instead of going up, it goes down. We have these goggles, these goggle lenses. 
that's a good shape to remember. And that same letter at the end of and, that's like a circle with a big handle. A lot of these letters and shapes keep repeating and that helps you remember what these words are. So now let's listen to our story about cow and carabao and see how many times we can hear the word and and how many times we can hear the word good. Cow and Carabao were good friends. They lived on a lansen or ranch where Carabao was good at carrying heavy loads and Cow was good at carrying light loads quickly and of course giving sweet milk. Farmer was very happy to have them both. But in long ago Guam, Cow and Carabao didn't look like they look now. Cow's hide was brown, tight around her little body and she was fast and small. Carabao's white skin did not fit him well he was bigger than Cow, a bit slower. He had so much skin to drag about. But they also enjoyed being together. They competed with each other all the time. Cow always won the races and Carabao always won the strength games. One day they went swimming in a nearby pond. They took off their hides and folded them carefully, placing them near each other. They swam till late in the evening, laughing and talking story. But a nearby trickster heard their laughter and decided to play a trick. He switched their skins, and it was so dark at night, and Cow and Carabao were having such a good time, they didn't notice or feel any different when they dressed up to go back home. That is, until morning. Cow walked to pasture, slow and dragging. Carabao raced to meet her, fast and feeling tight like a spring. When they saw each other, they realized that they looked different. Carabao had Cow's small hide. It was tight on him, but he felt energetic and happy. Cow had Carabao's oversized skin. She was loose and draggy and not feeling good about it at all. But Carabao, being a good friend, told her that she was now the same color as her sweet milk and knowing that made Cow smile. So to this day, cows are slow and have very loose skin and Carabao's are fast movers. And they are still good friends on the ranch. That was a great story about Cal and Carabao. They can have disagreements, but in the end, they end up being good friends. <laughs> oh, who's, oh, oh, Miss Honey! Hi, Miss Terry! Miss Honey, we were talking about your friends, Cal and Carabao. Oh, yes, those two <laughs> always have to compete at the farm. Oh, isn't it tiring? Because they're trying to see who's better, but we know who's the top dog on the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I don't like calling myself a dog because I am a very proud chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a good chicken, I'm sure. Yes, I'm a good chicken. And I heard you talking about the letter O's. They look like my eyes. <laughs> it's the same shape. <laughs> Your beautiful round eyes. Both, both eyes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Do the O's also look like your eggs and babies that you've had? Uh, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> I can make circular eggs if I like. <laughs> of I would love to see those circular eggs. Yes. I also am trying to create triangular eggs, <laughs> square eggs. Hmm. And did you hear me use the word and? I heard she used the word yes. and triangular and, and square. Good luck. I won't need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Terry, for this fabulous lesson. And I wanted to tell you and share with you that I definitely am one of the greatest holes in the farm. I agree with you completely. I'm Penny. good and I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> remember 
that every day, every week, every month, that you are amazing. You did a great job today. You learned a lot of new sight words. So, adios. I love this music. Hey guys, it's Mr. Ernest Ochoco. And since spring is all about love, love's in the air. We're gonna do a diversity word that has to do with the word love. And it's se agapo. Say it with me, se agapo. Good job. That is Greek for love. Cause love is in the air, y'all. Love is in the air. And today, I'm gonna to be your math teacher for comparing numbers. Big numbers, like this, and small numbers, like this, right? Big and small, small and big. <laughs> and I love the word love, isn't that fun? So, later on, we're going to be counting some really interesting things. And it's gonna be a surprise. The last thing we're gonna count is gonna be a really cool surprise. So make sure you stay tuned. Will it be fun? Will it be superhero-y? Will it be scary? I don't know. You will find out. Okay, so comparing numbers, right? Let's do some comparisons. We can even compare with stuff that we have on hand, like our hands, right? So look at this. How many is this? One, yes, and this. Two. So what's bigger? What is the bigger number? You're right. Two is the bigger number. What's the smaller number? One. Very good. Now how about this? Two and three. What is the bigger number? Yes, you're so smart. Three is the bigger number and two is the smaller number. Mm -hmm. Let's make that like this so you can see how big three is and how little small is compared to three. All right, let's try something else. Four and one. Which one is the bigger number? You can count it, right? There's four fingers here and one finger here, right? So four is the bigger number. One is the little number. And then let's try another one. Hmm. Let's see. Let's try five and five. What's bigger? I fooled you. They're the same. They are equal because it's five and five. Maybe we can count other things around my area here. Hmm. What can I find? I've got some stars. You guys want to count some stars? Ooh, there's so many stars all around me. It's like face. <laughs> We're not going to count those stars yet. Let's count some stars that I have here in my own area. Oh, look, I found some stars to count. Right here, we have some bracelets from Wonder Woman that have stars. Can you count them? One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's count these stars. These are Wonder Woman's tiaras. That's the stuff that she puts on her head. <laughs> and how many stars do you see? One and two. Good job. So let's put them together. I'm gonna ask my friend, Mr. Earl, to hold up the bracelet stars. Okay, let's go a little bit higher, Mr. Earl. There you go. All right, I'm gonna peek my head in here. How many stars do you see here? Four. Excellent. There's two. So what's the bigger number? Which one's the bigger number? Correct. Four is the bigger number. It's bigger than two. So that's the big number. This is the small number. Hmm. Good job, Mr. Earl. Let's go count something else with these stars. Here we've got a wizard's hat that has stars on it. So I'm gonna ask Mr. Earl to hold on to these bracelets again. And let's count, shall we? How many stars are on the wizard's hat? There's one, two, and three. Three stars on the wizard's hat. And how many stars do we have here on the bracelets? We've got four. So what's the bigger number? 
Correct, it is the four stars. Three is smaller than four. Good job, you guys. But how about this? Thanks, Mr. Earl. We've got two stars. So which one is the bigger number now? Three or two? Correct, good job. Three is bigger than two, and two is smaller than three. Excellent. Let's count something else. What's that? Oh my gosh, there's so many creatures coming at me, and they all have eight legs. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my God. There's spiders. Go, shoo, shoo. Ah, just kidding. They're my friends. <laughs> I like spiders. They're fun. I'm sorry, guys. You can come back. And I've got these spiders right here. It is a family of spiders. We have one, two, three, four, five, six small ones and two big ones. One, two. Which is the bigger number? Six or two? Yes, great job. Six is the bigger number. It's bigger than two. Excellent. Did you freak out with the spiders? Oh, I kind of did. <laughs> but I realize they're my friends. So, bye spiders. Let's do some other numbers. Okay. How about a big number like nine? Nine? Is it bigger than this number? Right here? Which one's bigger? Correct. Nine is bigger than seven. Very nice. Okay. How about this number? What is that? Yes, it's an eight. Is that bigger than this number? Yes, eight is bigger than six. Six is smaller than eight. How about this number? And this number. Which one's bigger? Yes, this number is bigger. Ten is bigger than nine. Very good. How about this number? And this number. Which one's bigger? And which one's smaller? Four is smaller than five. You guys are so smart. Woohoo! You guys did so great today figuring out what bigger numbers, the bigger numbers, and the smaller numbers, and comparing what's greater and less than, and less than and greater than, and big and small, and small and big. <laughs> Very, very good. Well, that's it for our math lesson today. And thanks for joining me here at PBS University. I had so much fun counting with you. And remember, explore your world and live your best life. All right, everyone. Bye. some red holes? Oh no, she can't hear us. Hold on. I'm, I'm gonna take off my headphones. I can't hear you. I did. Miss Chelsea, it's time for our science lesson. Oh, right. Okay, Um, just give me a moment to put all this stuff away for Before we start our lesson, we are going to learn a fun Chamorro word that means yes. To say yes in Chamorro, you say hungen. Now repeat after me. Hungen. Hungen. Yes, hungen. Very good. For today's lesson, we are going to learn all about the five senses. And hidden in this room is an item that activates each of the five senses. So stick around until the end of the video to see if you got it right. The first sense we're going to be learning is your sense of sight. Now your sense of sight allows you to see everything and everyone around you. Do you know what body part you use to see? I. Hunger. 
again. Yes, you use your eyes. The second sense is your sense of hearing. Your sense of hearing allows you to hear all kinds of different sounds. Do you know which body part you use to hear sounds? Ears. Yes, again, you use your ears. Well done. The third sense is your sense of taste. This is one of my favorite senses. Your sense of taste is activated when you eat food or you drink. Your sense of taste allows you to know if your food is spicy or sweet or sour or salty or bitter. Do you know which body part you use to taste? Mouth and tongue. Yes, Hongan, you use your mouth and your tongue, right? The fourth sense is your sense of touch. Your sense of touch allows you to feel if things are hot or cold, or soft or rough, or wet or dry. Do you know which body part you use to touch? Hand. Yes, Hongan, you use your hands. And although you use your hands to touch things, you can actually feel on all the other parts of your body as well. The fifth and final sense is your sense of smell. <laughs> the sense of smell allows you to see if things smell good or if they're really stinky. Do you know what body part you use to smell? No. You use your nose. Very good. Now that we learned all about our five senses, I think it's time for an experiment. And we are going to need the help of our lead researcher, Lulu. Now everybody, cup your hands over your mouth like this and say, Lulu, where are you? Lulu, where are you? Oh, hi, Lulu. I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, I was just teaching everybody about our five senses. Okay. And I was kind of hoping you could show us a little bit more about our five senses. You know what? I think it's time to conduct an experiment. At the beach. Huh? Wow, looks like a beautiful day to be at the beach. Hey, Lulu, what are some things you can see at the beach? Use your sense of sight. I can see some shells. This one is so pretty. What sounds can you hear, Lulu? Use your sense of hearing. I can hear waves and the sound of the ocean. It's so calming. What can you feel? Use your sense of touch. I love to play on the beach. Touch the soft sand. What can you smell at the beach, Lulu? Use your nose to activate your sense of smell. I can also smell the sunblock on my skin. It doesn't smell too nice, but I know it's protecting me from the sun. Is there anything you can taste at the beach? Use your sense of taste. My family likes to barbecue at the beach so I can taste the yummy hamburger. Amazing, you used all your five senses at the beach, Lulu. Have fun. Wow, that would like a lot of fun. And now we know that you can use your senses anywhere, even at the beach. It's fun to use your five senses. Thanks for all your help, Lulu. You're welcome. Would you like to come back and do more science experiments with us? Yeah. Yes? Awesome! See you next time, Lulu. Bye. Bye. So today we learned that we use our five senses to experience the world around us. Hey, now that we learned all of our five senses, 
let's see if you can identify which of the things in this room activate which of the five senses. Now, which one of these items in this room activates your sense of sight? The sunglasses. Hongan, the sunglasses. You use your sunglasses for your eyes when it's too bright outside and it's hurting your eyes. Very good. Now, which of these items do you use to listen? The headphones. Yep, the headphones. We use the headphones to listen to our favorite music or when we're watching our videos and we don't want everybody to hear it. Now, do you see anything that activates our sense of taste? The apple. Yes, Hungan, you can eat the apple. You bite it and it's so crunchy and juicy and sweet and delicious. Very good. What about something that activates your sense of touch? Do you see anything in here that we can touch? The fluffy robe. Yes, the fluffy robe. It's so soft and cuddly and cozy. We have one more sense. The sense of smell. What can we smell in this room? The candle. Yes, Hungan, we smell the candle. Now candles are very nice to smell, but don't touch them because it could burn your finger, right? Now you all have done such an amazing job at identifying your five senses. And I hope you have fun using your five senses, whether you're at the beach or at home or at school. So no matter who you are or what you're capable of, just remember to always be kind, and always do good, and we can experience a wonderful world with all of our senses. I'll see you next time for more science fun. Bye! Hafeday students, welcome to PBS University. My name is John Fernandez, and I'm the superintendent of the Guam Department of Education. These PBS University lessons are made to help you to continue learning. The teachers here prepared fun lessons on science, character education, math, English, and more. And they made it for you, the students of Guam. We're very grateful to them for their instruction. We're also thankful for you students, parents, and guardians who are watching. Remember, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you soon in the next school year. Thank you. Talofa. That's how you say hello in Samoa. Talofa, boys and girls. It's Mrs. De Guzman, your kindergarten social studies teacher for PBS University Guam. Today is a super cool episode. You know how we've been learning about maps? Well, today I'm going to take you on a little trip and we're going to use our map skills. I'll be taking you on a trip to California with me and Mr. De Guzman. That's my husband. Circle time will be a little different today. So grab a snack and let's board the plane. So our learning goal for today is, I can use map skills to find locations. Let's read that one more time. I can use map skills to find locations. Let's get to it. It's time for circle time. All right, make sure your seat belts are on and your seats are in the upright position. Let's go. Look at that amazing view of Tumon.
All right, we have a brief stop in Japan, and then we take off again to head to California. Our first stop is the USS Midway Museum. This is a historical naval aircraft carrier located in downtown San Diego, California, at the Navy Pier. Take a look at the top deck map. So much to see. At the top deck, you see so many types of helicopters and airplanes or fighter jets. Here's the hangar deck map. This is where we get to see more amazing planes. It's so cool we get to see the cockpit. This is where the pilot would sit to control the airplane. And lastly, the map for the second, third, and fourth decks. Be careful as we walk through these narrow hallways and passages. Watch your head and watch your step. Take a look at the chapel located on this aircraft carrier. This is the executive officer's stateroom. Let's use our map skills to find certain animals we wish to see. Our first stop is the Outback, where we get to see koalas trying to keep cool in the shade. This animal is camouflaged behind some grass. Can you see the cheetah? He's sleeping. According to our map, we're at the urban jungle where we can see monkeys and bears. Look at the giraffes. They're so tall. These are one of my favorite animals I have to see every time we visit the zoo. According to our map, we are here at the Elephant Odyssey. Look at the elephant playing with his toy. And now we are entering the Lost Forest. We can see this mountain lion and we'll be approaching some flamingos. Keep an eye out. Let's use this map to help us get to the farmer's market. According to our map, we need to head north to Kettner Boulevard and then take a left on India Street. That should take us to the farmer's market. We made it! Farmer's Market at Little Italy. Wow! Look at all the fresh produce. 
carrots, peas, zucchini. Look at all the fresh flowers. And fresh berries. This lady was nice enough to let us try some. Thanks for spending some time with me. What an amazing trip. I hope you enjoyed the San Diego Zoo and using our map skills to find where the elephants are located and where we can find birds. The USS Midway was another amazing adventure. We used our map skills to locate where people would sleep, where people would eat, and we explored so many other places where people would work. I always look forward to circle time with you. Have an adult like your mom, dad, an older brother or sister help you if you'd like to email me just to say hi or share what you enjoyed during circle time today. Have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye boys and girls. Hola amigos means hello friends in Spanish. Can you try saying it with me? Hola amigos. Amazing job amigos. Be on the lookout for today's video because I will be saying a few more Spanish words and phrases throughout. Here's a fun fact for you. Remember the tooth fairy that comes and gives you money for your baby teeth? Well, Spain has something similar. A tooth mouse. His name is Ratoncito Perez. Isn't that so cute? Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Hannah, and I'm back for another lesson on character education. But before we begin our new lesson, do you remember what we learned last episode? If you said good character and why it's important, you're correct. Now, do you remember the vocabulary word we learned last lesson? Character, that's right. And remember, character means all the things that make a person who they are. Before we begin, let's go over the I can statement for this lesson. Our I can statement is, I can name healthy behaviors. Can you say it with me? I can name healthy behaviors. Now can you whisper it? I can name healthy behaviors. Now can you shout it? I can name healthy behaviors. Muy bien, amigos. Muy bien means good job. Now what our I can statement means is that you will learn examples of healthy behaviors and what that can look like. Healthy behaviors that, you guessed it, make you have good character. We also do have some vocabulary words that are important to know for this lesson. One of them is character traits. There are two types of character traits. There are physical character traits, meaning the things we see on the outside of a person, mainly how they look. And the second one that we will focus on today are personality traits, traits that are in the inside. They are what makes a person who they are. Does that sound familiar to you? Some examples of personality traits are respectful, responsible, and kind. Today we're going to learn how to have these personality traits and what they can look like from my sweet, sweet friend, Ellie the Elephant. 
Hello little kindergarten friends. My name is Ellie the Elephant and I'm absolutely delighted to be here and to be able to talk to you about personality traits that can help you practice healthy behaviours. Are you ready? Let's get to learning about all types of personality traits. The first kind of personality trait that we'll be talking about is being respectful. Thanks, Ellie. Being respectful means you act in a way that shows care for others. You can show respect to people, places, and things. Being respectful is a healthy behavior because it helps you have good relationship with others. It also encourages you to take care of your surroundings. Can you think of more ways of how to be respectful? What a great idea! Here's an example of how you can show respect to others. Saying things like please and thank you are ways of showing others respect. So don't forget to say it next time. The second personality trait is being responsible. Thanks again, Ellie. Being responsible means making the right decisions and doing what you're supposed to do. It's a healthy behavior because it shapes you into a better person who can be counted on. Being responsible can look like a lot of things. Here's an example. Oh, Mr. Jerry, I do apologize. I accidentally broke your pencil. That's okay, Ellie. Thank you for doing the right thing by telling me. That's very responsible of you. Can you think of more examples of how to be responsible? Awesome job! And the third personality trait is being kind. Thanks again, Ellie. Being kind can mean a lot of things. Some examples of kindness are being friendly, generous, and caring to others. Here's an example of how you can show kindness to others. Hello, Mr. Jerry. I just wanted to tell you that you are such a great friend and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Why, that is so nice of you, Ellie. So let's review. Let's name the good character traits that help us practice healthy behaviors. Number one, being respectful. Number two, being responsible. And number three, being kind. It's time for us to go out there and remember to be respectful, responsible, and kind because these healthy behaviors make the world a much better place. Until next time, my friends. Konnichiwa! Ha ha! Half a day! Half a day! And konnichiwa, my friends! Konnichiwa also means hello or half a day in Japanese! Konnichiwa! Guahu, Sisi Norababi, and welcome to our tomorrow time! So today, we went to my ranch and oh man, I was able to do something awesome. Can you guess what is the something awesome that I did today? Hmm. Wow, good answer. High five my friends, high five again. All right, that sounded really, really great. I loved your ideas. But today I did something with my nizuk, my coconut and the thing I did with my coconut was to prepare me for cooking something for later. So here are some of the things that I did with my coconut. But before we go into my ranch, I wanted to tell you about 
the area where I picked my coconut or my nitsuk. I love this area because it's out in the open and I'm in the grass and there are a lot of trees all over. I'm pretty sure you can see some of the trees when we go into my ranch. All right, my friends, let's get ready. Now, let's do Hanzu. Before we go to my Lantzu, let's go through some of these words that will really, really help you today. Here's my first word. My first word is kata. Kata. Can you say kata? <laughs> All right. High five, my friends. Great job. Great job. Malik. Again, kata was very important because we are going to husk the coconut. That's right. We're going to take that coconut out of its husk. The next word, of course, that we're going to use today is called kamzu. Kamzu. Can you say kamzu? Maulik, we're going to grate the coconut. That's right. You're going to see me get down on my kamzu and grate that coconut and get out some deliciousness from it. Right? All right. Our next one, of course, we have to get into that coconut. It's tzatzak. Tzatzak. Tzatzak means to cut or cut open. Can you say tzatzak? That's right. We're going to take some of that. We're going to cut our nitsuk open and drink some of that juice and take out all the meat in that coconut. I know. I know you're getting excited, right? And let me tell you, I have a surprise for you too. I found one coconut with some faha in it. Do you know what faha is? It's when the coconut is starting to harden back again and grow into a trunk of nitsuk. Yeah, that's right. Can you say faha? Maulik, man, you guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. And the faha is a lot harder, or not hard, but it's hard but soft at the same time. And when you, I open up the coconut, oh my gosh, I could smell it. It smells so good. I can't wait to share that with you at my Lantzu or my ranch. All right, now let's do how, let's get ready to go. All right, follow me. Half a day, welcome to my Lantzu. Today we're going to katsa our nizuk. Please make sure to get permission from your parents before you do this at home. Katsa is to husk. All right. We have our nizuk. Yeah. Next, we have our faha, which we're going to husk one more time. Faha is an awesome, awesome part of the nizuk where we get to taste it. It's so yummy. Can you see the breeze outside my lantu? Isn't it amazing? All right, let's go ahead and pull some of that husk out. Again, don't forget, ask your parents for permission before you katsa your nizuk. That's right. All right, I'm almost done, but if you get a chance to, please make sure to look for this type of nizuk with that piece out. That's right, no juice in this nizuk. All right, let's tatak. All right, too, yeah. Mmm, so delicious. I love coconut juice. Do you like coconut juice? Yeah. All right, one more. This is the one with the faha in it. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to taste this. Mmm, so yummy. I love it. All right, and lastly, we are gonna come to our nizuk. All right, and we're gonna make our candy nizuk. That's right. Oh man, what an awesome, awesome flavor is gonna come out of this nizuk. Make sure, get permission from your parents again before you use your kamzu. Please, thank you. All right, and lastly, we have our Kamsun Nizuk. Awesome. All right, my friends, thank you for joining me at my Lantzu. I'm going to enjoy my Faha. Mmm, so delicious. I'll see you all later. 
All right, my friends. What did you think about my Lunzu? Huh? Did you like it? Can you show me a thumbs up, two thumbs up if you loved my Lunzu and saw me getting down there and grinding my coconut? All right, let's go and review these words. Can we review all the words that we just used today? All right, great. Maulik, Maulik and all. Our first word is katsa. Katsa. Maulik, good job for trying to say that word. Our next word is kamzu. Kamzu. Maulik, yeah, yeah. High five. All right. Our next word is tsatsak. Tsatsak. Wow, great job. Don't forget. As Nana and Tata first before you actually touch the music. As a matter of fact, make sure that they are the ones that do it for you, right? Good job. And our last one was something we found, or I found actually, which I was able to open, and it was our faha. Can you say faha? Maole, great review of these words. I hope you enjoyed coming to my lunch or my ranch today and enjoyed me getting down and doing all of those awesome stuff with my nituk. All right, that's enough for tomorrow time today. I'll see you guys all later. And biba mesamoru. Biba. Biba mesamoru. Biba. Ajo samaguun. Fast. Fun facts. Fast. Fun facts. With Mr. Ernest Pichoko. Rananim. Rananim is how you say hello in Chukis. Now, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Have you ever been on a plane? Ooh, like that one right over there. <laughs> well, I was just on a plane going to Colorado and back here to Guam. And there are some things on the plane that I wanted to bring up to you so that you know how to be courteous and also to be safe while you're on a plane. This is the safety card for United Airlines B787-8 or 9. Right there, that's the type of plane that we're on. And this is the safety card for those planes. And right here we have the pictures for taxi, takeoff and landing. That's when the airplane is moving around the airport before it flies. Absolutely no cigarettes, e-cigarettes, or even vaping. Nothing, that's against the law. Make sure you remember that. Now above is the storage where you can put your hand carry. And right here before taking off, you've got to stow away all of your trays, your food trays. That's for your safety. And of course, keep your seat upright so that it does not hurt anyone behind you. And these are the seat belt instructions. As you can see, there are different types of seat belts, so make sure you follow the instructions for each type of seat belt that you might have to use while on the plane. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But it's always important to read the safety information while you're on the plane and to pay attention to the flight attendants and also the videos because sometimes they have safety videos and you get to watch it and that's your fast fun fact with me boop, mr ernest ochoco happy flying and remember safety first bye Half a day students, I'm Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. For more than a year now, you all have continued to wash your hands and watch your distance from others. And you've done a really great job wearing your masks. We know your parents and guardians have helped you to make these changes to keep yourself and your community safe. As Governor Leon Guerrero said, we are happy you are here. 
We want you to continue to learn and sharpen your skills with the help of PBS University. This program is the result of a collaborative effort. We couldn't do it alone. I'd like to thank the teachers and support staff of the Guam Department of Education and PBS Guam for their work and their commitment to our students. I'd also like to thank you students for participating at home. To your parents, I'd like to thank you for taking an active role in your child's education. We are all eager to return to a time when all of us can share and study together in person. Until then, we hope you learned something new from this PBS University instruction.